Hello and welcome to another Gary's Mod tutorial. Today we'll be building this machine right here. Actually, we'll be building a simpler version of this machine. Uh, we can subtract these two wheels. This is a prototype version of a machine I made way back. Uh, it's actually one of the first videos on my channel. Uh, basically, everything you see here will have, except these two wheels, except this wheel set right here on the back. And uh, when we're done, we should have a machine that operates just like, like the uh, Jeep in particular. You know how when, how when you accelerate the wheels, uh, your turning radius decreases as you accelerate? Get in. Of course, you'll have to use the directional keys. Of course, this system is a little more sloppy. In, uh, in the design that we'll be building, it'll behave more like the Jeep in terms of... Uh, this is actually a duplication of a design that I made. This thing actually uh, survived the duplication process remarkably well. Every other dupe that I make doesn't uh, never fa fares as well. Like this one in particular. This is theoretically a more... well, a simpler design, and yet... Look at how wobbly it is. Meanwhile, this... Just to prove it to you. It's right here. It's, it, this, is abs this is absolutely wild, the fact that this machine, of all machines, survived the duplication process. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, look at this thing. Let's get to it. First, we're going to spawn. 1 by 3 by 25. First, we're going to spawn. 25 by 150 by 25, right here. The more precisely you build this, the uh, the straighter the straighter it will track. Actually, we'll, we'll need two of these. Now we're going to go into wheels and frames. We're going to spawn two of these. These will be our wheel hubs. In case if you're, in, uh, in case you're wondering, and in case, okay, and if you were wondering, this is the front, and this is the rear. We are applying wheel hubs only to the front will actually be deleting this here bar in a moment. This is just for spacing. Okay, let's look at, uh, if you look at this right here, we actually lose the bar in the front, but we keep it in the rear. Because the rear is much simpler than the front. We have to fit, you know, this, this little steering doohickey here and uh, in these wheels and wheel hubs need to be able to articulate. So that's welded in place. Now we can flip this over. Now we can start adding our suspension. Any rigid rope will be black. Non-rigid rope will be rope colored. All right, let's freeze these in place first. Freeze all of this in place. You want to be as precise as possible. The more precise we are, the straighter this will track. You want to be roughly centered, well, exactly centered on this uh, wheel hub here. Because these will need to pivot. We get at least four points right here. And of course, you can pause the video if I'm moving too quickly at any point. Another one right here. I can barely see the cursor sometimes. Oh, nope. These go on the top. These go on the top. All 
All right, we want to add some to the rear as well. These don't have to be as precise, but you want to be symmetrical at the very least. At this point, we can safely remove our front bar. Now our wheel hubs are suspended, but they st are still frozen. You absolutely want to make sure these are still frozen. All right, now we're going to add our wheels. Uh, we're going to do these are going to be our forward driving wheels. We're going to make that we're going to make the forward up arrow and the reverse down arrow. We'll make the torque ten thousand. Actually, no. These are our forward driving wheels. We want the torque to be at around 3,000. That's fair. And then the only wheels that are compatible with this driving mechanism are the moped wheels. I've tried. Believe me, I've tried to uh, apply this design to other wheel types, and the other wheel types are just too heavy or just too wonky. I mean, I could play around with, like, the with like disabling gravity and that might do it, but this design works consistently with uh, this wheel size. Alright, and now we're going to add our Pitman control wheel. This is what's going to push the, push the, uh, the wheel hubs left and right. We're going to add our Pitman control wheel. And the forward is going to be left and the reverse is going to be right. And the torque needs to be at 10,000. Alright, there you go. Now we're going to add our connecting, our uh, connecting arms from the pitman control arm. We're going to add them starting from the, okay, we want, we want to freeze this too doesn't hurt to freeze these things in place. And we're going to add it to the very back right here. We're going to add it to the uh, outer edge of the wheel hub right there. And do that right here on this side as well. We're going to do it at the front as well for the sake of rigidity. All right, cool. And next we're going to add the forward control wheels. Now these forward will be set to, uh, to up and reverse will be set to down. We're going to add these right here and here. We want to make sure that the forward rotation actually happens this way, toward the front, uh, clockwise. Well, on the other side it's anti-clockwise, but... And we want to weld these two together. We want to weld these two together, freeze them. And we're going to connect the front the forward control wheels, we're going to connect them with a rigid rope. Actually, no, scratch that. Non-rigid rope. We're going to connect them from the very bottom. The very bottom. Oops. The very bottom. We're going to connect them to the very side of our pitman control wheel. Same on the other side. This is a very, this is a very symmetrical design. Okay, and yeah, uh, depending on how precise we were, that's basically how straight this thing is going to track. So uh, we can unfreeze now. Yes, no, yes, 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 we can. Okay, well, we're not going to unfreeze completely, but we're going to, uh, we're going to do some calibration work. Uh-oh. 
we got to uh, make sure these are both spinning in the same direction. All right, now we press forward. Yep, a little straightened up. Cool. Now we want to make sure we're going to loosen up some of the tension on our front forward control wheels. These are the forward control wheels, not the front forward control wheels. I call these the forward control wheels. I just keep calling them the front wheels for whatever reason. Okay, now that we have released tension on the Pitman control wheel, we can set our range of motion for the, uh, for the front wheels. We're going to take a non-rigid rope. We're going to attach it at this point and terminate it right there. And that's our range of motion for the, uh, for the front wheels. Basically, we can't turn it any more than that. We're going to take our rope constraint with our forward control wheels giving slack to the Pitman control wheel. We are going to constrain our wheel from rotating any more than that to allow forward control wheels to give slack to the pitman control wheel so that the front arms or the front the front wheels can turn okay now where do we put that constraint okay boom okay right there right there that's fine is now the, the wheel should be able to rotate forward and pull on the wheel or pull on the Pit the control wheel, and when it's not being pulled, it will no rotate no further. It will rotate no further than what is a lot, what is necessary to give the Pitman control wheel slack, so that it can actuate on the front wheel hubs. Okay, now this should work. We might have a little too much. Okay, we sh should take away some of the power of the front wheels or of the forward control wheel set. That you should have a platform that you can build on. Just uh, don't put too much weight on this and if you put any weight just be sure to go into physics property, physical properties and disable enable gravity. Cool as beans.